Hey everybody, this is your girl, Mrs. Toy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife. That's right, I'm satisfied. And today, I want to share another reason why I'm so satisfied. And not just me, but many other couples that are successful in their marriage. Why are they satisfied? You know, oftentimes you may see a list of uh, the richest people in the world and their the 10 best habits to become rich and all of this great stuff. But today I want to talk to you and really quickly because I just finished dinner and my family should be arriving home soon. And so I need to get through these really quick, but I'm going to share with you today, 12 successful satisfaction, satisfactory, shall I say, ways that you could implement in your marriage. These are successful habits of the most satisfied marriages in the world. These are the things that they do on a regular basis. And I promise you that if you add at least six of these that you discipline yourself, I would even say, I think you need to go 10. It's 12 of them. But if you get consistently 10 of them on a regular basis in your marriage and make this a habit that your marriage can be successful. I get a lot of letters um, asking about a lot of different stuff. And mind you, for those who are inboxing me and asking questions, I really do want to get to your questions, but I'm unable to. It's so many. I need you to know that I do offer uh, private coaching. And also we are starting up Solution Sundays at seven, where you get an opportunity to send your question is in and you remain anonymous. And I will tackle the issue that you're facing in your marriage, your dating life, or divorce, separated, whatever it may be. So let's get started with the 12 reasons why, how you can be successful in your marriage. And the first thing is couples that are satisfied and successful in their marriages, they don't solely expect their spouses to make them happy. They don't depend on them solely to make them happy. Why? If you read your word and if you're a man or a woman of God, God warned you not to do that. He said, it's better for you to put your confidence in me than in man. It's not if your spouse is going to fail you, it's when. So if you put all of your happiness that your husband or your wife is the sole reason why you have a smile on your face every day, then you're going to fail in marriage. Because that means whenever your spouse is up, you're up. Whenever they're down, you're down. Whenever they're aggravated, you're aggravated. You cannot give anybody that much control of your life. As a matter of fact, we ought to allow God to be the master of our emotions, the master of our actions and how we respond to our spouse. If we allow God to be the master of that, then we, wanna, we won't depend on our spouse to be our soul responsible, solely responsible of our happiness. There's been times that um, I wasn't happy. There's been times my husband wasn't happy. What are we going to do? You, you know, what you, what you going to do? You, you can't make them make you happy. You got to learn how to uh, uh, fill yourself up with joy and peace, even in the midst of unhappiness. See, happiness is a thing of the world, but joy comes from the Lord. Joy can be in your heart even when things are not well. I've been truly happy at times, full of joy when times were not that well in my marriage. Why? Because my husband's attitude today, like if he woke up on the side, wrong side of the bed or if I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, I'm not going to let that rule my day. So do not allow your spouse to be the sole reason why you put a smile on your face. If you do that, I promise you, if you make them the sole responsible, responsible for your happiness, you're going to, you're going to, your emotions are going to be everywhere. You, you're going to go crazy. You, you're going to be schizophrenic. You're going to be Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You're going to be up, down, everywhere. You cannot allow anybody to have that much control over your emotions. Don't do it. Secondly, they don't play with the money. Satisfy successful married couples do not play with the money. Many of y'all play with the money. You, you playing with the money. You, he don't know what you making. She don't know what you making. Uh, you know, just crazy stuff. You, you gambling the money away. Uh, you spending it on stuff that y'all didn't agree on. Listen, I, I'm not against separate accounts, right? Uh, but here's what everybody needs to know. We all 
husband, wife, need access to all accounts. Now, when I say separate accounts, I mean that, I mean, I think each husband and a wife should have an allowance account. That when, our, when we put our money in one big pile, when we put our money in one account, then we agree on the allowance that each one of us get to live our lives. I shouldn't have to call my husband every time I want to go get my nails done or if I want to eat a sandwich out. I mean, come on, let's not be ridiculous. Uh, so if you want to have a separate allowance count, great. But when you keep all of your money separate, uh, when you keep all of your money separate, I forgot to put my phone on silent. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, when you keep your money separate and you guys start arguing about stuff, uh, you know, uh, things start to get out of balance because you are not communicating about the money. Some of y'all are selfish with the money. Some of y'all are greedy with the money. Some of you believe your money only is yours. Cut that out. You know, the Bible said the two shall become one. And when we're one, all of it belongs to us. That means the house is ours. The cars are ours. The dishes are ours. The check is ours. It's yours and mine. I mean, when I have a check, I sign it all. My husband, uh, you know, in, in my girlfriend's household, her, she handles the money in her, uh, in her marriage. But in my household, my husband is the better manager of the money. So I sign my checks off to my husband. Why? I trust him. Why? I trust him. If you are an untrustworthy spouse and your spouse can't put money in your hand and trust that you're going to do right by it, you really need to check yourself. <laughs> what you doing? What? You're causing frustration. That's why your marriage is not satisfied. That's why you're not successful. And you could possibly be on your road way to divorce because you plan with the money. Satisfied, successful couples do not play with the money. It is our money for the purpose and the plan that we decide what it is for together as one not two, one. You didn't want that? You should have stayed single. All right. Number three, they give each other space. Satisfied, successful couple, couples give each other their time to themselves. Listen, my husband loves boating. That's what he loves to do. And he travels for golf with his dad. Go be with your dad. Go be on the boat. Have a ball. I'm not calling. I'm not saying where you been. How long you going to be? Where you going to be back? Oh my goodness. Are you a bugaboo or what? Okay. We have to give each other, each other space. Okay. You are not like, I'm not going to swallow you up and just every time I turn around, there you are. Oh, there you go again. Oh, well, it's like, I need a break from you. I love you, but I don't want to be up in your face all the time. Okay. I love you, but you need to give your spouse space. Okay. Away from you. My husband, when I go out, he knows, ex listen, here's the thing. When we give each other space, we're not disrespectful with it. We always know where each other is at all times. So my husband, when I go out with my girls, when I go, I go out, of, I travel a lot. When I go out of town, my husband has no problem with that. No problem at all. Why? Because we give each other space. You need to give, if you're not giving your spouse space, space to go play basketball, golf, and whatever their thing is, because every man has a thing, right? Every woman has a thing she loves to do. And if you don't have a thing, I think you need to find a thing so you cannot get on your spouse's nerve about their thing. Okay. All right. So next, let's move on. Um, they have a happy, satisfying sex life. Let's say that again. They have a happy, satisfying sex life. That's right. Satisfied, successful couples have a very intimate, wonderful sex life. Why? Because they're open about it. They communicate about it. They talk about it when there's changes going on. I mean, listen, we're getting older. Many of us are getting older. If you're getting, um, you're in your fifties or whatever, your body starts to change. Hey, let's talk about that. We, we, we openly talk about sex. Not only that, we talk about what we both enjoy, what is satisfying to me, what is satisfying to you. We have a good sex life. We don't play with the sex either. Oh, you ain't getting on tonight because you wasn't acting right yesterday. And about what you did last week, ah, ah, it's on lockdown. We don't play games like that. No, we don't. Right? Because 
First Corinthians chapter seven and four, those who know that the video went viral, people just went crazy because they don't have understanding of God's word. In first Corinthians chapter seven, four, God says, husband, husband, your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to your wife. Wife, your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to your husband. He said, defraud ye not one another, lest the enemy come and tempt you. Temptation increases when you denying, when you are denying each other of sexual satisfaction. Didn't we sign up to do this? <laughs> it's one of the benefits of being married. I could not believe that that video went viral. My girlfriend called. She said, Toy, are you telling me that a video went viral because you are asking married couples to have sex? I thought that's what they wanted to do. <laughs> See, here's the problem, married folks. And single folks, I need you to understand this, that the enemy is running rapid and he's getting over on single folks and married folks with this one area of sex. With the single people, I need married couples to know this. The single folks, they're having all the sex. They're, oh, they getting busy. They, they just get jiggy with it. They having all the sex in the world. Married folks, crooked, crooked. Cricket, is anybody home? We're not having any sex. What? I mean, well, y'all ain't. <laughs> Let me put y'all in it because that ain't me. Many couples. I was at a conference and a lady whispered in my ear and she said, I heard you're going to be talking about sex. Can you please talk about that strongly? Because it's been five years since we've had sex. Now, five years, five years. Wow, I've heard three years. I've heard a year. I've heard six months, three months. All of it's crazy. Six months, three months, a year. Listen, I'm upset if it's two weeks. I, I'm, I'm a little shaky. I'm, I, we need to have a conversation. We need to go sit on somebody's couch. We had sex. Are we crazy? Successful, satisfied couples have an active sex life. Because they communicate, they don't play with sex, they don't use sex over their spouse's head, they don't play with that, they enjoy one another. And you're going to find out why they're able to have this wonderful sexful, sex, sex, sexy lifestyle is because of all the other things in these 12 steps. Why they do, when you do all of this, sex is just a, a beautiful part of it. When you are doing the things that successful, satisfied married couples do, sex is an energy for the marriage. It keeps, it keeps us close. Remember, the two shall become one. How do they become one? Through sexual intimacy. That's what makes us one. So it's not shocking to me that the enemy would want to take sex away from married couples. Why? Because he knows that when they're not intimate, they're not connecting, and they're no longer becoming one. They are pulling apart. Now listen, I do understand that when people become 80 years old, 90 years old, that's not as important. Things change. I'm not talking about them right now. I'm talking about you who are in your forties or in your thirties, who are still 50, still have an active sex life, but you got a dry sex life in your marriage because y'all have all of these issues. I promise you, well, if you have a problem and y'all having problems with sex, y'all need to go sit on somebody's couch and get Get through whatever y'all going through so y'all can get back to having some sex. Or maybe you're not enjoying sex. And that's another thing that highly successful, satisfied couples do. They talk about satisfaction. Okay. They talk about it because I don't know about you, but I'm not faking anymore. You know, I, I get the short end of the stick when I fake. There's a lot of wives out there that are not being sexually satisfied. They're faking and their husbands think that they're satisfied and they're not. I'm not doing that. <laughs> if I'm not satisfied, you're going to respectfully know. <laughs> and I'm going to, we're going to talk about it, right? So we can, because I want you to walk away happy and I want to walk away happy too, right? <laughs> it's just, we both in this together. All right, let's move on. I can talk about sex all day, all right? Because it's a huge problem in marriage. Let's move on. Number five, they don't sweat the small stuff. They don't. They don't sweat the small stuff. You know, early on in my marriage, we're 23 years in, by the way, my husband and I, we have four boys. For those of you that don't know that. Early 
early on, my husband and I will argue about the dumbest stuff. I mean, some of y'all are doing that right now. I mean, it's it's the dumbest stuff that we argue about. Oh, you didn't do this. Oh, when, you told me you was going to be back here at 3 and it's 325. Really? You put your sock right there. And you, it's dumb stuff. The toothpaste. It's, we argue about everything. Satisfied, successful couples discover that most of the stuff we're arguing about is dumb and stupid. And so we stop arguing about it. We just, when you do it, we just look at you like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> and you keep on moving because that ain't nothing that we're about to spend a whole weekend mad at each other with. I mean, you guys are arguing about some of the dumbest things. I really think about your arguments at the end of the day. There's some real problems in this world. There's people that are hungry, don't have food. There are people that don't have houses, nowhere to sleep. And you're arguing about these these minute, stupid things that at the end of the day, they mean nothing. They mean nothing. Absolutely nothing. So they don't sweat the small stuff. Number six, uh, they, for the most, most part, make a point of always respecting one another. Always. Which means they don't call each other out there each other's name. I, I, can't, I can't imagine my husband calling me out my name. I... I just don't. I've heard wives say that. I, I can't imagine. I turn into the Incredible Hall. I Let me tell you something about Mrs. Toy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife. I am allergic to disrespect. I absolutely hate it. I Early on, God had to help me. When I first got saved, God had to help me because my anger level, oh my goodness, I had anger issues because disrespect, I, listen, people out in the world, they can say whatever, but the one that's laying next to me, I, I, I don't do disrespect well. My husband don't do disrespect. But to get up in his face, call him out his name, cuss him out, tell him what I ain't going to... What is that? That's disrespect. That's what it is. And it's ugly. And for those that are in the body of Christ, God says, think of these things that are good, that are holy, that are praiseworthy. If you are thinking on cussing your spouse out, or if you're thinking on getting even and revenging and talking nasty to them, putting them down, dogging them, you out of line. And you know you are if you're a believer. Now, if you you are the world and, and you want to keep doing that, you go right ahead. But I promise you, you're on, your road, uh, you're on the road to divorce because people cannot continue to stay in an environment, environment that is toxic. And when you're disrespecting a person on a regular basis, it's, it's a toxic environment. And I personally cannot stay in an environment that is toxic. So they respect each other for the most part. Yeah, they have some disagreements and sometimes they get beside themselves. But when they get beside themselves, they come back and they apologize and make it right real quick. For the most part, they respect each other. That's what successful, satisfied couples do. Number seven, they understand the spouse. Check this out. This is really, really important. Successful, satisfied married couples understand that their spouse is a part of the purpose and the plan that God has for them. I want you to sit on that for a minute. Do you know how many people's purposes, their, the purpose, the reason why they were put on this earth has been destroyed, put off, held off, all because they divorced, they're separated. Because if you're doing the work of the Lord and you're fulfilling your God-given purpose, it's very challenging to do that when your marriage is falling apart. When your marriage is out of control. When you refuse to do your part. When your spouse, when you're going through something. I, listen, I, I, I've been doing Better Wife Felt Life for 10 years now. And it's very difficult. Listen, there was one time I was about to go and speak. Me and my husband got into a disagreement. I was in a rush, but I stopped and I sat down. And he said, what's wrong? I said, I can't go speak to these people until we get this right. I, 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 I can't do it. I, 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 I don't feel right. Can we please take a moment and talk about this? Because I, I can't go out there and we're like this. I, I, I can't. So we had to sit there. I didn't take that time out and talk to my husband. And we dealt with that thing, kissed 
slapped my butt, and I was out the door. That was a personal little thing now I told you that. Anyway, we was I was out the door, had a successful event, spoke on marriage, blah, blah, blah. It was great. Why? Because my husband is a part of the purpose and the plan of what I do. I'm part of the purpose and the plan that God has called him to do. And in order for him to successfully operate in his purpose, he needs for me to be a great partner in this marriage institution. We need to support one another. And when we understand that my husband is a part of the purpose and plan, that you understand that your wife is a part of the purpose and the plan that God called you for, then you will handle your marriage a little bit different. It's a different mindset when you think like that. Let's move on. That's a big one. So you need to sit on that for a minute. Marinate on that one. Tell God to give you some revelation or more on that, but I got to keep going. Um, number eight, they are quick to forgive and resolve issues. Satisfy successful couples. They forgive quick and they're quick to resolve issues. Let me tell you something. When God taught me how to be a wife, this is one of the things that I love about my marriage is that when me and my husband have an issue in our marriage, we forgive quickly. We handle the issue quickly. And because before, let me tell you, I was horrible. I would go two months, three months holding it in, ready to fight, right? You know, like some of y'all, just holding it in. I'm not, mm -hmm, that's your pride. Your, your pride and your selfish. I'm not going to, I don't want to talk. Oh, I'm whatever. I'm just going to ignore him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the enemy is just robbing you of your potential, robbing you of your joy. That's you. You allowing that. Every time you don't resolve an issue quick, every time you don't forgive your spouse and or, or go get counseling, if it's a real serious, serious issue, and y'all can't get past it. Y'all need to go sit on somebody's couch to get some help. It's worth every dime because listen, divorce is more expensive than counseling. It is. You need to read some, some books that will help you. And listen, I believe in the power of one. This, listen, a lot of people say, well, it takes two. I can hear some of y'all might be saying that in the comments right now. It takes two. It takes two. Let me tell you something. Jesus went to the cross by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went to the cross by itself. Sometimes it could take you changing your ways. God said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Why don't you put on your love wall, ignore your spouse, and do what God told you to do on a consistent basis. Get into prayer and trust God that he will keep you and guide you even when your spouse is acting up. Even when he's acting out. Listen, of course there's some barriers there. If your spouse is abusing you physically, you, you need to go get some protection. You need to go protect yourself by getting out of that house, getting out of that environment, because that ain't God. Okay? That, that, listen, there will be people that tell you to stay in that. But let me tell you this. They're not getting punched in the eye. Nope. They're not getting choked. Nope. So they're going to tell you to stay, right? But you sitting up there getting choked, your eye getting busted, right? They throwing you around, but they tell you to stay there. Oh, okay. And then we're at your funeral. Don't listen to those folks. Do not listen to those folks. You have a, listen, you have a right to protect yourself. Your spouse, if he's abusing you, or if she's abusing you, you have a right to protect yourself. How do I know this? Let me give you a quick example right quick. When Jesus was on the earth, remember the Bible says, be ye imitators of Christ, right? So if we're supposed to be imitators of Christ, we can do everything he did, right? Are, are, are we in agreement with that? Thumbs up, everybody. We can do whatever Jesus did, right? So Jesus, when he was on the earth, he was walking around teaching the kingdom of God, right? And when he was doing that, he had some people that was hating on him. He had some people that wanted to abuse him. He, he, he had people who wanted to stone him. I want you to pay attention to what he did when they tried to abuse him. When they tried to stone him. Great example. So he was standing there. I got to find this scripture uh, because I know the scripture, but sometimes I forget where it is. Google it. Bing it. I want you to look it up. Every, you know, go find it. You can just Google it. Okay. So Jesus, all you have to do is 
they tried, just Google, uh, they uh, tried to stone Jesus and it'll come right up. Okay. But it's escaping my brain right now. Anyway, they were about to stone, they were about to stone him, right? Because he was speaking the truth, doing something right. You could be a good wife and your spouse still want to beat on you. You could be a good husband and your wife still want to be, be, beat on you. doesn't matter whether you're a good wife or a bad wife. No one has a right to put their hands on you for no apparent reason. None. So when they went to go and pick up the stone to stone, abuse Jesus, when they turned around, they said, wait, <coughs> where did homeboy go? Jesus bounced up out of there. And that's what you should do. Because Jesus never allowed someone to abuse him until it was for a purpose. And that purpose was the cross. That purpose was to die for you. Listen, the Lord took your beatings already. He took your abuse already. He took your sin already. You don't supposed to be getting beat again. So if your spouse is abusing you, bounce just like Jesus did. Okay, you, you hear me? Okay, you can, and if, if, you, if you're scared, there's an 800 number. I don't have it, man. I usually have it on me. I didn't know I was going to uh, talk about it. But again, you can Google that, you know. Um, if you're being abused, there's an 800 number. You can look up um, abuse or shelters um, that uh, help those that are abused. Uh, so I'm going to go on. But listen, I love you, but uh, no abuse. Um, so let's go here. So anyway, I want to close on that. I'm on number eight. They are very quick to forgive and resolve issues. You've got to be willing to talk. You've got to be willing to open your mouth and you've got to be willing to be respectful when you talk. If you come in, rah! if you come in, I don't appreciate what you did to me. Oh, you did it. It's going to get worse. Okay. Bad things happen when everybody is out of control and your emotions are everywhere. Calm down. It's not the end of the world. Talk calmly and control your emotions and stay in a place. What, what, what is your end goal? Your end goal is to come out of this in peace, getting back to joy and getting back to having sex, right? Keep that on your mind and you will guide yourself through the conversation a little more successful. All right, let's go. Number nine, they have love habits. Successful Satisfied married couple have love habits. What do I mean by that? When my husband, every time he leaves out that door, we give each other a kiss and a hug. When he comes back home or when I leave and I come back home, no matter where I go, I don't care if I left the house three times. When we enter back, when we first see each other, we kiss, we hug, we touch. Before we go to bed, we give each other a kiss and we say goodnight. We hold, we touch. Those are love habits. When I'm sitting watching TV with my husband, I take his feet and I start to rub it. He'll start rubbing my back. We're constantly showing love and affection towards one another through touch. We have love habits where we're constantly touching. The one thing that the enemy wants to take from married couples is their touch. If you're not touching, I want you to know you have allowed the enemy to enter into your marriage. Yep, you sure have. And you think it's you. No, you agreed with the enemy to stay angry, to revenge, and to be nasty. That's how he works. Listen, do y'all know that the enemy has no new tricks? He doesn't have to make up any new tricks because the old ones are still working and we keep falling for them. Once you discover his traps, his tricks, then you'll be better equipped for it. So when you see it come, you'll recognize that even when your husband, your spouse, or your wife, your husband says something stupid. Most likely they let the enemy get a hold of their lip. So why respond? If I know that, why am I responding? I don't respond because I'm going to be praying for you because you just, <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to cast that demon out. There are people walking around that are, you know how you say, oh, they are a functioning alcoholic. They are functioning demon-possessed people out here where they're allowing the enemy 
to just rule over their emotions, rule over their attitudes, be rude to their spouse, be nasty, be vengeful. All of that stuff is of the enemy. Remember, God talks about in Galatians um, chapter five, he talks about the fruits of the spirit and the works of the flesh. Why does he call it the works of the flesh? Why does he call it the fruit of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit, right? Because gifts are naturally given. Don't we all like gifts? Gifts are good things. But when you have the works of the flesh, you got to work it being evil. You got to work it being nasty. You got to work it being rude. So when you work in that thing, know that you are working with the enemy and he's working to destroy your marriage. So cut it out. You cut it out. Stop pointing to your spouse. Why don't you cut it out? And if your spouse is doing it, pray for them because God is faithful and just. And he will, his ears are open to your prayers, to those who have faith. Because if you don't have faith, he ain't doing nothing for you. God does not respond to doubt and unbelief. He only responds to faith. So if you go in faith and pray, God will bless your husband. God will turn them around. God will send labors across their path to plant seeds, water seeds, that the eyes of the understanding be enlightened. They will turn it their, from their wicked ways. God will send people you don't even know their way when you're not even around to send a message to them. So trust God. Don't walk by sight, walk by faith. Trust the Lord. Okay. Number 10. Successful, satisfied married couples pray together and they read their word together. They talk about the word. They read the word. They pray together. Let me tell you something that's so satisfying to me. Just, I just love. I love when my husband and my children are around the table and my husband is praying with us and teaching my boys the word. Oh, that is so sexy. <laughs> tell you the new sexy is a man who knows how to lift his hands up and worship the Lord who knows how to pray and read the word that's a sexy man oh that's a turn on right there you be like boy you get some tonight I'm gonna do you good tonight boy we keep on praying it's a turn on when your spouse knows how to pray and even for I, I met a man who loves the Lord but his wife is not into you know she's kind of she believes in God, but she really don't live it. He has to beg her to go to church and all of this stuff. And it just hurt his heart. But it's a turn on for her. You know, for him, he's like, man, I just want a wife who knows how to pray me through some stuff. I want a wife who knows how to read the word with me. I want a wife who want to go to church with me. That's what a man of God wants. A real man of God wants a woman of God. Wants a wife who can pray with him, pray him through it and, and, and build him up. Through the word of God. That's what a real man wants. A real man of God wants. That's what he wants. Save, sanctify, feel with the Holy Spirit. And you like to have sex. Okay, let's move it along. So praying and reading the word is paramount. Why? Because if, if you're doing everything and you praying and you're reading your word, y'all can get through almost anything. I mean, stuff come your way, the devil can't mess with you because y'all been in prayer. Y'all got each other's back. You know it's the enemy trying to attack your marriage, so you're not going to attack your spouse. Why? You've been in that word. So God is guiding you. You're allowing the Holy Spirit guide you because you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, right? He's the master over your life. He's just not the Savior. There's some people, listen, when the Bible says um, that you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart. Most people just confess and they just believe that Jesus died on the cross, right? They believe that. So they just want to be able to go to heaven. But that part about believing it in your heart, which means that you make God the master over your life, the master over your emotions, the master over your, that you dedicate everything, your entire life, your, your standing up, your sitting down, your going to work, you dedicate it all, your money, everything is dedicated to God. So you allow God not only to be your savior, but he is, he's daily with you, guiding you throughout your life. So not, is he just the savior, but he's the master of your soul. And he, you allow him to guide you and lead you in every area of your life. And even when you mess up, you repent and he is faithful and just to forgive you. Prayer and reading the word is paramount for a satisfied, successful couples. Okay. Um, number 11, 
I'm, I'm almost done. I, I heard my family come in. They, they did y'all? I gotta show y'all that chicken I made before we end that. They ready to eat that, okay? Um, so number eleven, they make time for their marriage. Successful, satisfied married couples make time for their marriage. They don't play around. They go on dates. They'll sometimes sit and just hold each other and talk. You know, when they're in the car, they enjoy each other. They take, you know, I, I know people that take road trips. I don't like road trips. Uh, I don't. If it's more than four hours, no thank you. I'd rather get in the plane and we can talk there, okay? <laughs> and we can talk on the beach, okay? <laughs> I don't, that's how I talk. But successful, satisfied married couples make time for their marriage. Yes, the kids are important. Yes, work is important. Yes, uh, going to church and serving in church, all that's important. But what's more important outside of spending your time with the Lord, the next thing is spending time with each other and making sure you put that time and keep that romance alive. They, they know what's going on in the minds of each other. If, if, if you, if you, if the guy or the girl in the cubicle next to your wife or your husband knows more about what's going on with your spouse than you. Mm -mm. That, that's not good. You should know what's going on with your spouse. You should know, well, what do you want to do next, babe, with the business? What, uh, or how's work going? And, and are you trying to go to that next level? What is going on with your spouse? What do they want to go? What do they want to do? Do you know that? Do you know what's going on with your spouse? Do you know if they're frustrated, if they're aggravated, if they're depressed, if they're frustrated? Have you talked to them? If you haven't talked to your spouse, know that you allow the enemy to come in and talk to them. You need to know what's... And, and, and listen, the Bible says this mostly to men because men more have a problem with this than women. That's just the fact, y'all. The Bible says to the husbands, get... He didn't say this to the wife. He said this to the husbands. Husbands, get to know your wife according to knowledge. Now, why did he pull you to decide and not us to decide? Because we're willing to talk. But he knows that a man will, will, will go out and shine his car for hours. He will go play golf, play basketball, play a video game, watch TV. He'll do all of that instead of sit and talk to his wife. So the Lord tells a man of God, then listen, sir, I need you to know what's going on with your wife. I need you to know what's going on with her so that you can protect her. If you don't know what's going on with your wife, and this is what happened in the garden, Adam was sitting right there. What was he doing? Playing with the animals? I mean, the Bible says her husband who was right there. So here she is having a conversation with an enemy and you sitting right here and you're not paying attention. What? That's why God held Adam more accountable for what happened. When he came back, he said, Adam, where are you? Now he know Eve ate that fruit first, but why did he go to Adam? Because God ultimately holds the man ultimately responsible for the condition of that home. Why? You're supposed to be paying attention. You're supposed to be paying attention to your wife, to your children. What's going on? You should know more than anybody, even more so than your wife. All right, move on. All right, so they make time for the marriage. So listen, if you haven't been out on a date in a while, set a date, go out this weekend, I don't care if it's just a couple of hours. Do not go to the movies because y'all don't watch enough TV at home, okay? Because you don't, you don't get to spend time with each other. Now, if you're going to go to the movies, let it be one part of the night. Let, let it not be the main part of the night, okay? Go out to dinner. Go bowling. Something you got to do to interact with one another. There's entertainment places. Uh, down. I know here in Detroit, we have all different types of entertainment places where you can go play pool, you can go play ping pong, you can bowl, you can play video games or whatever, these arcade places or whatever that's for adults. You can go and have some fun with your spouse. Ain't nothing like laughing and having fun with your spouse. It really renews the marriage. So I'm down to number 10, 12, which should have been number first, which is the most important, but I saved it for last because it's the most important. Successful, satisfied married couples. They put God first. They put God number one. Listen, I need, I want everybody to say this to your spouse. If you sitting right there with them or the next time you see them, I want you to say these words. You are not my everything. 
say that because see, we live in a climate that we say stuff. It's in our songs. It's in our movies. It's in our, all these love stuff. Oh, you're my everything. You mean the world to me. If you left me, I don't know what would happen. You're my everything. No. Never, ever, 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 ever think of your spouse as your everything. That's a huge mistake. My spouse is not my everything. I'm not his everything. I'm a great component in his life, but I'm not his everything. The only, only one that should be your everything is God Almighty. Remember, the Bible says, in order to get with me, this is the Lord speaking, in order to get with me, I need you to hate your mother, hate your daddy, hate your spouse, hate your children, and one more. I need you to hate yourself. Now, the word hate in here means to prefer. So God said, in order to get with me, in order to make me master over your life, I'm going to need you to put me first over your mother, your daddy, your spouse, your children, and even one more. I need you to put me over yourself because even you would sin against me. God is saying in this scripture, I need you to make me your everything. If you make God your everything, you'll get everything you want out of your marriage. Because God is for your good. He said, I have plans for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a good end. God has some good ideas for you. So when you give God your everything, he'll make sure that everything that's going in your life is shining bright like a diamond. He'll make sure that every time you call on him, that's why he said, seek ye, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He didn't say seek your husband. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. What is up under all? All. In John um, chapter 15, God says, uh, Jesus says, I am the vine. My father is the gardener, right? And then he goes on to say, if you read that whole verse, he talking about if you remain in me and I in you, in verse seven, he said, you can ask whatever, whatever. He said, ask whatever you want. And my father would do this for his glory because you are his disciples, because you are his children. Why? I'm going to give you this great example. I have one of my sons and I'm, I got to hurry up and close out. One of my sons, uh, I have four boys. So there's one, one of them who every time we go somewhere, me and my husband turn around and we look and we, we have to check him right before we get in the car because he would, he would put on a shirt that's been balled up and he done hit up under his couch, up under the couch in his bedroom or up under his bed and he'll put it on. He'll say he ironed it and I'll say, did you cut the iron on? I mean, he looks a mess. And so what we would say is turn around and go back in the house because you're not about to embarrass us. He said, but I look good. No, you don't. You, when you go with me, you got to look good because if you're looking good, Check this out. If you're looking good and your kids are looking bad, we talk about you. That's, that's what people do. They, they say stuff like, oh my goodness, look at her. She looks nice, but look at her kids. Her kids' head is nappy. They, they clothes ain't earned. They, uh, they look in a mess. Guess what? It's not the kids that we're talking about. It's you we're talking about. If your kids are rude, if your kids are disrespectful, we talk about you because we know that's a parent issue, Right? So when you tell your child to go back in the house, when we tell our son, go back in the house and put on your clothes, we don't tell him that for his sake. We tell him that for our sake so that we can look good, right? We feed our kids. We clothe our kids. We take care of our kids. Why? For our glory. So that when you look at our kids, you say, oh, Toy, you take me and my husband. Oh, y'all kids are really nice. You got some real respected boys there. You got your boys. Oh, you got some handsome boys. Like that's to our glory. So when God says in a John, I want y'all to go look at, read the whole chapter, chapter 15, verse seven and eight. He says, ask whatever you want, whatever you want. My father will give it to you for his glory, for his name's sake, for his glory, for his name's sake, for his glory. Showing, he said, that's showing that you are his disciples, showing that you are his kids. So God wants to bless us just because you his kid. 
Because when you look good, God looks good. When you say that you are a child of God and you believe in God, you living for God, it is job, God's job to bless you. So why? Why? Not for you. Not for your sake. For his name's sake. So when you trust God and you believe God and you have faith in God, you go into prayer and say, Lord, this is what I need. You said you would give me the desires of my heart. I ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, do this for your name's sake. I remember my pastor was speaking on this a couple of weeks. I was so excited that he said that I was on the edge of my seat because we need to realize that God is father. He's better than any other dad and other, any other mother on this earth. He knows how to parent us more than anybody. And he wants us to look good. But in order for you to look good, you got to give him your everything so that he can make your everything all that and a bag of chips so you can be shining bright like a diamond so that your marriage can be shining bright like a diamond. I hope today that you go through these steps, that you wrote them down, that you, that you put them on your refrigerator and you say, this is what I'm going to focus on until it becomes such a pattern that you don't even have to look at the list no more, that you do these 12 things every day in your marriage that you just listen. It took me, listen, I didn't get this amazing overnight. That's right. I'm amazing. Why? Because I made God's word the final authority. I made God my everything. And that's why I'm the world's most satisfied wife. Not because my husband does everything to satisfy me. Because he doesn't. It's not because I satisfy all of my husband's needs. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I mess up. Sometimes he disappoints me. But that's not the reason why we're satisfied. We're satisfied because we put God first and made him our everything. And so he makes sure that we stay satisfied in marriage because we honor him we obey him and we not only speak his word, we live it in our daily life. So listen, playing church is not enough. You got to get all the way in, boo-boo. You got to get all the way into God. And I'm telling you, when you dive all the way in, you have everything, just, you, you just get all the way in there. Just dive everything, wig and all. Just get it all the way in there. I promise you, God is going to bless your socks off. Watch, taste, and see how good he is. Try him out. I promise you, he's infallible. I, I Listen, I, I'm thanking y'all for joining me. I appreciate you. This is what I want you to do. Share this video. Do you know how many friends in your list of people that are dealing with issues and don't have answers? This video can be an answer to somebody on your page. So I ask that you share this. Listen, y'all, Solution Sundays at 7 will be coming back very, very soon. You're going to look up and say, hey, she's on. That's where you can send your questions and the issues that you are facing in your marriage to me in my inbox here on Facebook, or you can go to my website, mrstoybanks.com, mrstoybanks.com and uh, send me an inbox. Uh, listen, I do not answer private questions. If it's not for Solution Sundays, I don't have the time to do it. If you want coaching, I do do coaching. And listen here, as you know, I've been getting a um, lot of friend requests and you, you guys know that Facebook give you on this fan page, a maximum of 5,000 friends. I'm at my limit. I've been at my limit for years. Praise God. I thank God for that. And I now you can follow me if you're watching this. You can follow the page, but you I cannot friend I cannot friend you. I cannot accept your friend request. But here's what I'm trying to do. Help me out, y'all. Can you help me out? I now have a Mrs. Toy Banks page, and I'm trying to move everything over there. So after you leave this live, do me a favor. Go over there to Mrs. Toy Banks face page. This page is Toy Banks. Go to my Mrs. Toy Banks page and push like so you can receive the notifications for all the lives and all the information so that I can build that area so that many of you could follow what God is doing uh, through, the, through me with Better Wife, Better Life. I'm excited to share uh, this great wisdom that God has given me in the area of marriage. Um, and so I pray for you. I pray that God continue to bless you. I pray that you not only heard this message, but you're actually going to put it to action, that you're going to actually live out. You're going to actually ask God and the Holy Spirit. You're going to ask God to allow your Holy, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you and to strengthen you as a husband and a wife so that you can have a satisfied, successful marriage in the Lord. I thank you all again for joining me. I'm your girl, Mrs. Troy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife and for a better wife, better life, helping you balance it all. God bless you. Oh, I thought I was, I was going to show y'all my chicken.
Wait a minute. Look at the chicken. Look at that chicken. Ah! That's a honey chicken, y'all. All you need is brown sugar and honey. Season the chicken. Oh, clean the chicken first. You know you're supposed to clean chicken. Clean the chicken. Season the chicken. Put some honey on it. If you're out of honey, just use some syrup and some brown sugar. Put it on broil, but you got to watch it. Every 10 minutes, flip it over. And in about maybe an hour, chicken will be so falling off the bones. It's the bomb. Try it out. Your family will be totally satisfied. Again, I'm your girl, Mrs. Troy Banks. Go share this page. The world's most satisfied wife in for better wife, better life. Helping you balance it all. God bless you.